all of the things that you've done, and after that, you got your PhD as well. What were some of the most challenging or a couple of the most challenging moments that you had through that journey before you started your own consulting business? I think at the beginning of entrepreneurial journeys, um, and my partner's, <laughs> my partner's about to have is uh, like a big landmark moment where he's, he's leaving his nine to five to, to start full time his mm -hmm. foundation. So I, I think like that's a big challenge moment is like that jumping off point of when am I going to be done working for someone else and do my own thing. Right. And mm -hmm. I think that that's a pretty universal thing for entrepreneurs is mm -hmm. I, you know, especially if, if you have kids, right. We, we have a household that includes a six-year-old. There's a kind of like, how do I keep a roof over our head and food on the table and it, all of that stuff. I think that that was the biggest scary thing for me along the way. Um, and I made that jump in the midst of the pandemic really realized that I, I couldn't parent the, the way that my kid needed to be parented right. and have a traditional job. And I was like, well, okay, I've been an entrepreneur at that point for 13 years. I have a pretty robust skill set. I've got a lot of letters after my name. There's <laughs> eight of them. There's no reason I can't, I can't do this other than all of the stories that I've told myself, which are, this is dangerous. It's risky. There's no stability. How are you going to get health insurance? Right. And like, we have right. a lot of, a lot of narratives in society about what responsibility looks like. Well, you get a, a good stable job, right? Mm -hmm. And it's like, well, well, who creates those jobs? Mm -hmm. Companies, mm -hmm. companies in DC, right. it's also the government, right? But, yeah. <laughs> but, but we see what that instability looks like, right? The pandemic has really brought clarity to the fact that that a lot of companies aren't super stable right and mm -hmm. with all I think I've lived in DC for 19 years in this area like there's so many government shutdowns and stuff I have tons of friends that get furloughed government contractors yeah. that never end up getting paid and so I think the biggest challenge and the biggest thing that I teach entrepreneurs because I'm primarily an executive coach now and I've had three different current clients gone from a place of being on the brink of divorce to a place of like good sex, family finances <laughs> are working, I respect and communicate well, right? Because they're no longer yeah. struggling with, oh my God, if my company doesn't work, I've let my family down, I've right, all of mm -hmm. this different stuff. So mm -hmm. I think that's probably like the biggest challenge that I overcame was, was just the fear of, is mm -hmm. it time to leave my nine to five? Am I crazy for doing that? And then for moms, like I had a very big narrative, which was I'm a bad mom. Mm, yeah. I'm a bad mom if I leave my stable job. But I think the upside, oh, oh, precious entrepreneurs listening to this, right? My annual salary was $50,000 in 2020. My January sales as of four days ago was $50,495. You know, we think financial freedom to be, oh, we're working for ourselves. We have freedom in our time. We can create a schedule that we like. We can go to work or not go to work, do this, do that. We have the choice. But I think financial freedom is not just having the choice to do what you want, but also having the lack of stress when mm -hmm. you don't have what you want. Right. And knowing that you're in a good space. But let's talk a little bit about that mindset that helped you mm -hmm. shift. How did you shift that mindset? How did you overcome those challenges? There's a rote answer, right? Which is like, I did a bunch of mindset work and I like really got in touch with my inner self-confidence and da 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 right? The reality <laughs> was I studied abroad in all of these places. I met a lot of different people from all around the world. I had a lot of my Judeo-Christian upbringing beliefs challenged and I had a spiritual awakening mm -hmm. and I started being mentored by shamanic healers and Akashic record healers and figured out that I was able to access the Akashic records and work on a spiritual level with clients. And that shifted everything for me, everything. And mm -hmm. so the way that I had the mindset shifts was I do EFT, emotional frequency tapping, where I, it, for some people, it's, it, it's known a lot now as just tapping, but it's, it's a mm -hmm. modality used in psychology and spirituality to move feelings through the body. So okay. every morning, every morning, every morning, I say a little prayer and I journal out what my purpose is. I, I write, you know, I help, I help clients come home to 
themselves. I help people recover from trauma. I help people find a sense of purpose in their life. My work is important. And then I tap through all of my limiting beliefs. I literally, I'm like, I don't deserve to make a sale today because my laundry is not folded, right? Like all, all of the crazy things that I tell myself, I process them right there. And instead of telling myself, well, that's crazy. You can make a sale even though your laundry is not folded, right? There's a part of me that believes that that's not true, right? My house has to look perfect before I can be good because if I'm an executive coach and I tell people how to get their crap together, my crap has to be perfect, right? Mm -hmm. Like, like that's a real story a lot of entrepreneurs tell themselves. And, right, like most so of us true. have dirty laundry, metaphorically and literally, right? Yeah. Yeah, so I, I meditate every morning for 10 minutes. Yeah. I make a cup of coffee and I sit and I meditate and I just try to focus. I close my eyes and literally just try to t kind of like envision looking at my third eye. And then I, I journal out how I want to impact my clients and my work changes the world and blah, blah, blah. And then I take 10 minutes and I tap through all my limiting beliefs and then I just do whatever feels good. I'm like, I want to go for a walk. That feels good. And I'll end up meeting somebody that turns into somebody that refers a client, right? Or mm. I'm going to fold my laundry or my kid is having a meltdown and I'm going to take them to get ice cream in the middle of the day just because, you know, and, and I think that there's a real narrative in our culture, which is if you want to make a ton of money, you have to work really, really, really hard. Mm -hmm. The biggest mindset shift for me was recognizing that what we make financially, who we hold ourselves accountable to be is a reflection of the people we surround ourselves with, right? Human, humans are programmed to be pack animals, right? If we mm -hmm. are not part of the pack, we will die, right? Because saber-toothed tigers will get us right. and woolly mammoths will eat our babies and it's the worst, right? So on a biological level, we are programmed to fit in because to not fit in literally on our like, primordial brain is to die. And so when most people are thinking about entrepreneurship and personal development, I just have to get over the need, right? No, it's a biological need. And if you try to fight it, you're going to spend a lot of time wasting it. So you might as well use it to your advantage. So most people, like me two years ago, most of my friends made between fifty dollars and $70,000. A couple of them made way more. A couple of them made a little bit less. Most of them made between fifty dollars and $70,000. My brain, my subconscious primordial don't get eaten by a saber toothed tiger brain said, it's normal to make $50,000. That's mm, a really good yeah. salary. That right. sounds really good. That sounds really good. That sounds really good. When I decided I want to have ridiculous amounts of wealth, I want to pay for my kid to go to grad school in Zurich if he wants to. I want to not have a mortgage. I want to get to take my kid to Europe for the summer and screw around in France just because when I made that decision that that was the kind of freedom I wanted to have in my life, I drew out a Venn diagram, again, nerd, four circles, wealthy, happy, kind, generous. And I said, I want to meet five friends that sit at the intersection of this. Oh, I want to expand yeah. my social circle so that the five people I spend the most time listening to, hearing from, thinking about, being encouraged by, Wealthy, generous, happy, kind, right? Mm -hmm. You have just yeah. explained the whole, you are the five friends you surround yourself with. Like you've mm -hmm. just explained the science behind that. Yes. People say that all day long and you're like, yeah, 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 that makes sense. But you have just explained the science behind it. And yeah, I yeah. love that. Thank you. That was so fascinating. And that was super enlightening to me. And I was just kind of like, and I get it. I mean, I totally agree with you. It's something that I grew up where my parents always said that to me to surround yourself with the people mm -hmm. that you would want to be like, not in a way where you're trying to like mimic them or you're yeah. coveting them or whatever, but there you look up to them. It's like yeah. what your goals are how you want to be in life. So that's, thank you. I love that. We actually talked about Oprah before we started this. And even Oprah has said that I have lots of coaches. I don't have yeah. one coach, but she has a coach for like all these different things. You know, you find a coach, do research, make sure that that coach is for you and fits whatever mm -hmm. you want. And you're, it's aligned with your purpose and, you know, again, your goals. And also if they have the caliber to do what they, they're saying that they're doing. But yeah, I think coaches are so important. It helps you, grounds you, helps you get vision also and a plan of yeah. action sometimes. Yeah. And so, yeah, I just love that. And so more power to you and for all the joy and blessings that you're spreading around you. But before we call it a day, I wanted to ask you, what is your favorite book, personal fiction, 
self yeah, yeah, yeah. healing, whatever, whatever book. Well, what is something that you would suggest to somebody? You are a badass by Jen Sincero. Okay. Everyone needs to go read You Are a Badass by Jen Sincero. If you would like to tattoo it on your brain, that's fine. Or your arm, that's great. Print it out and put it on your bathroom as wallpaper so you're reminded of it every morning. Do that. Okay, so go read You Are a Badass by Jen Sincero. Favorite book to read. If it's the holidays, go get you David Sedaris, Holidays on Ice. And uh-huh. and you just, it's a family tradition as we listen to that in the car on audible.com. Oh, nice. It's very, sardonic it has nothing to do with personal development everything to do with sometimes you just elves need that that. he's getting drunk yeah exactly i'm gonna i'm gonna actually link um, all of those to the show notes as well yeah and i'll i'll also say um a couple of people to follow online yeah. brendan bruchard is one of oprah's coaches i got to see him live it was amazing so follow brendan bruchard emma burgess is a coach on facebook she is my coach go follow emma burgess follow paloma lev She's a high ticket sales coach. She taught me a lot of what I know. You can follow me. I'm just soul Dr. Liz, DR Liz. Yes. How do uh, we connect with you? Tell me. Yeah. So you can follow me on Instagram, which is just soul Dr. Liz, S O U L period D R period Liz L I Z. Um, and then Dr. Liz Dubois.com D R L I Z D U B O I S.com. And then like, I feel like I want to like leave a couple of last tidbits. When people get really overwhelmed in entrepreneurship, they tend to think that the solution is to work a lot harder and to figure it out. And what I see consistently with people making six and seven figures easily, right? Not burning the candle at all ends, not they've never seen their child, right? Like the way to hire a hundred dollars from them is to stick it on their kid's forehead. No, I'm talking people that have like genuine work-life balance that like binge all of Bridgerton in two nights because they, right? 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 Oh my God. I so over identified with the character. It was really uncomfortable. I couldn't handle it. But anyway, this is like the struggle of being an empath and watching television Next is you know, level. Sure. <laughs> right. But like the people that I surround myself, it's normal to make millions of dollars and it's normal to be able to sleep in until nine 30 in the morning and binge Netflix when they come out with a ridiculous English romance dramedy. Right? Like I think for those of you that are listening to this and you're in the entrepreneurial cluster F personal development world that says you have to wake up at four in the morning, you have to be a marathon runner, you have to not eat any carbs, you have to listen to personal development podcasts 24 seven, you're not allowed to take personal time unless it's to go to a conference on personal development. I promise you the most important thing in your life is not making your company succeed. It's finding a way to have peace with yourself and be happy. Because if you can do those things, your company will succeed. I, I completely agree with you. It's a whole package. It's not just one little, one little peel of that onion. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, yeah. Completely agree with you. Thank you for your words of wisdom. They have really touched me, I know for a fact, and really inspired me. And I'm pretty sure they were inspiring all the listeners out there as well. I truly appreciated you coming and taking time out and being a part of this. Thank you so much. Yeah. Oh, you're welcome. No, and if I can just, uh, the, I'm like, oh, the last thing. Yes. We, we, start, we started with me saying I'm very happy and you saying that, that's, so, that's so, you know, unusual. It's refreshing, yeah. People don't say it, yeah. What I want you, Girja, and you people listening, if you cannot answer without even thinking, that's my answer. It's a good day to live on a boat. I'm very happy. There's no thought to it because it's just true. If that's not your answer, not the yacht part, you don't have to buy right, it. Right. But, but if your answer <laughs> is not instinctually gut level, I'm very happy. Give yourself permission to burn down what's in your life that's not making you happy. Mm-hmm. If you're in a job where you walk in the door and you feel like you want to call in sick, quit your job. If mm-hmm. you're in a partnership where you feel belittled and feel like you're walking around on eggshells, leave your partnership. If you are wearing clothes that make you feel gross because they're too small and you gained weight, go get new clothes. Stop making yourself wrong for wanting the things you want. Burn down the bullshit in your life that other people told you you had to have in order to be worthy and like run at your dreams headlong. Mm, Love it. So, so, so powerful. So powerful. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.